what keeps me motivated is actually just being in my own environment. Pristine, beautiful, and I've been doing a series over the last year on my local rock pool. I thought, what else can I do that um, is just a little bit still associated with it? And then I thought, well, landscapes. I've, I've never shot landscape in my life. I've never used a tripod. You know, I'm a people photographer. But uh, I found myself on those days where maybe I had an afternoon off, I'd come up to, to this place and I would just shoot some landscapes. In the last 12 months, I've done a number of documentary shoots that I have stood out to me. One in particular was going out with the Royal Flying Doctor Service out to central Queensland to a very remote station. And it was a mixture of documentary, but also studio lighting on location. So this was one of those dream jobs where you're out there photographing the doctors and nurses doing a uh, like a retrieval not a real for life one but this is set up for their uh, marketing the the other one that really stands out to me that I did in the last 12 months is another Australian Geographic shoot and this was a story on raptors that were taken to the hospital the wildlife hospital and I followed through these a raptor from hospitalization to being set free. I've had some really memorable portrait shoots this year as well. One of them was of the artist David Usher at his family's property out west of St George. So this was out there for a few days, just documenting David working, but also setting up some portraits that involved studio lighting on location. Another memorable portrait I did, funnily enough, was another artist and this was Judy Watson. And it was a really interesting brief because they didn't want her painting. They just wanted her doing whatever. So it was a very exciting, very quite challenging in a way to think outside the square. One of the things I, I've really, really enjoyed about using this camera is number one, the size of it. It's very compact. Um, I've been using the 50mm lens exclusively and it has literally changed how I photograph. Previously, I would carry a big bag full of gear. Now, that's what I take on 98% of the shoots. With just a, a backup camera, that's it. Something else that has proved to be really important in my work is the sensor size. So now I've got 40 megapixel, uh, invaluable when shooting for Australian Geographic style shoots and we animals in the environment, etc. And you sometimes you can't get close enough and you do just have to blow it up a little bit and life-saving. Another feature that when I first saw it, I thought, yeah, that's ISO dial, nothing wrong with that. It's, it looks beautiful, but it is so handy. And it's just being able to pop it out and you can leave it out if you want to, but when you're on a shoot where you're moving, through all these different um, lighting scenarios, it's really easy just to, to dial it as you're going along without even thinking, you know, and then lock it down when you're comfortable. Doing this landscape work, I, I, I don't like setting rules, but number one, I'm not a landscape photographer. So I thought, I love black and white. That's what I feel. I can feel it completely. And the other important thing for me was to come and photograph up here almost when the sun 
is going down. So it's very dark, very moody. I'm just looking at the light going across the water, just at the top of the falls. And then everything else just goes to black. The light is still in these beautiful rocks. And so we almost get, get these really moody, um, I won't say spooky, but very dark and moody landscapes. And you know, it wouldn't appeal to a lot of people, but it appeals to me.